Great. So uh, welcome, everyone, to another Research Hub community call, where the first topic today, I think, was proposed by Tyler in our uh, Discord group. Um, so as everyone knows, we tweeted a couple times about this uh, Research Hub. Well, the Research Hub community is part of the Gitcoin grant round 15 um, that specializes in DSI. So we've got about a week left, and we've done a great job so far. I think we have almost like 50 donations or 50 different donators, which is like pretty impressive for, for just like a week of it being out there. Um, so yeah, I guess Tyler wanted to talk a little bit about how we can do some girl marketing in order to like continue to uh, get more donations into the community uh, GitHub grant or Gitcoin grant. Yeah, I figured um, I saw how impactful those, that one project had an average of like $2 donations and they were in the tens of thousands of dollars matched. And so I figured, you know, if we all have these kind of DSI and like crypto uh, just friends, be really good to reach out to them and say hey you know if you have time and you have two dollars to spare like it would really help our, our content so like personally i've reached out to a couple of just random nft servers that i have and a couple of friends have donated maybe you know like on the order of like five people but you know if we all do that it might really add up kind of quick yeah totally so when you messaged your like other nft discords did you like what what was the content of the message yeah i basically said i, I recently got involved with this scientific project called research hub Gave like a one sentence sentence introduction to who you are and like what the goal of the project is and then i happened to mention brian's name real quick as like a founder and link the blog post and i kind of linked them to the website in the blog post and said hey you know we're raising money if you want to check it out and donate here's the link so it's maybe like a real short paragraph one one message yeah linking the blog post is a great idea um ricardo jeff and i over the weekend threw together like a quick one pager. Um, if anybody wants to take a look, we'll end up like stylizing this uh, just to make it like easy to share like a, a notion page for anybody who's interested. But yeah, that that sounds like a great like short succinct message. Awesome. Um, just one quick note. It looks like it says you need access to access that document. Just a heads up. I'll uh, share or change the sharing settings right now. One second. Yeah, I have a couple things to fill in on the Gitcoin stuff. So um, one, um, I just changed the title to say that it's um, like the Research Hub community, um, just so that it's clear that like this is kind of a community governed um, kind of submission for the grant. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, Research Hub Inc. has their own, you know, sources of funding and stuff like that. So I, I, don't, I don't want that to impede or get confused um, with the fact that like the community is, you know, asking for kind of some help with some funding. Um, the other thing a few people have messaged on the Discord, so I wanted to fill in on the community call, which is um, we're not we're part of the main round matching round, but we're not part of the D side matching round. Um, it's a little odd. I um, so what I so before the whole thing even started, I received an email saying um, from them saying you know your your Gitcoin grant uh, seems like it would fit in the D side round, and because ours existed already, I had to fill out a form uh, that would kind of add that tag to us. So I filled out the form, you know. Not heard nothing until uh, when the thing started at September seventh. I followed up with an email with the person. Didn't hear anything from them, so I just just yesterday resent them an email and sent the Gitcoin support an email just to see if we're missing like if if we're like offsides in terms of eligibility somehow or if they're just we're slipping through the cracks. So uh, I'll fill everybody in on that as soon as I get more information. Jeff, I, do you know Umar? Umar works for. Gitcoin and he's in like a bunch of like DSI circles. I can ping him and see if he knows anybody to help like, you know, connect us to who makes those decisions. So I'll send that message right now. I think Umar, so the, the first email I got about the DSI stuff was from Umar and Kaido. Uh, and Kaido is the person that they said to refer to to shoot the emails. And that's who I've been trying to message, but I've gotten no response. So if you can message Umar, I think he's, he's well plugged in there. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think I have Kaido's Telegram as well, so I'll, I'll message both of them. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. That'd be awesome. I guess anyone have any other ideas when it comes to like guerrilla marketing on how we can like help research hub community members get more donations to the Gitcoin grant? Um, I'm wondering because so it seems like the weighting of the Gitcoin grants is like very contingent on like um also your like history in gitcoin so if you just spin up an account really quickly and just donate the matching of that is less than if you had been kind of a gitcoin member for a really long time and i know you need a github account um to do the login uh and so i'm wondering if there's like a place or a location where very github centric people are available that might be kind of open to donating to the cause since they're 
they probably can very easily make the Gitcoin account or already have one. And if they do have one, they've probably had it for quite some time. Yeah, it's a good idea. I know that, um, like, I think Gitcoin has a subreddit and like there are a bunch of Ethereum subreddits. So it might be worth sharing, like just on, you know, like targeted subreddits. Um, I wonder for GitHub specifically, I think we could do some research and try and find like a like a like Ethereum forum maybe might be a good place. Um, yeah, not not really sure. I have to look into that. I think the Reddit Reddit's probably a really good place to start though. Yeah, yeah there is um, uh, there is on GitHub. There is like they do have basically what uh, GitHub does have a page where they will list your project if GitHub thinks, thinks it's uh, it's good enough to uh, basically list it in a page where uh, others can contribute to sponsor the project. I'll do a little bit more research and see if there is, it's something we can quickly get on. It could be like a, uh, you know, like a long wait list kind of thing, but maybe there is something we can reach, uh, we can do to reach GitHub people. I think it's a good idea, Jeff. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So for now, we'll wait. We'll wait for for you, Kobe, on that, and then and we'll go forward with like Reddit, probably. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, fair. Yeah. For sure. And in general, I think Twitter activity. Uh, you know, hoping that someone big, uh, big can you know retweet our tweets about the uh, Gitcoin. That would that could help tremendously. Like in general, Twitter is a really good you know medium for this kind of things especially for like big accounts that may have transacted already uh, through Gitcoin. Um, yeah, I don't know if in this um, form could work, but maybe we can issue some NFTs for some features of uh, of research hub, for example, a freemium subscription, or that's not allowed. Unfortunately, I gotta stop you already. <laughs> that's unfortunately yeah, not will, allowed. That's in the remove, rules. They'll remove your entire matching fund if you do some like quid pro quo or like uh, NFT rewards for people to donate. Yeah. Yeah, but I was not thinking about GitHub or like Gitcoin. I was thinking about something else, just to attract funds to research hub it's separate i see seen, yeah some other projects have like i've seen like a decentralized youtube kind of thing that just has a donation in the top right um yeah. i've also this is like a really good example i think like uh signal their primary business model is donations so um I don't know if it's like exactly what we're looking for right now because we're still trying to figure out like uh, how to generate revenue through Research Hub. And I think we're like on the right track with uh, bounties, but there are examples of some pretty useful tools, you know, existing on purely donations. So it is something we could look into in the future. Um, I guess any last thoughts on how we can potentially uh, do some social marketing around the Gitcoin grant, Jeff? Um maybe less of a social marketing but i'm wondering if we would be allowed to put you know, just like we had the Sycon banner if there is that banner for gitcoin like we could spin one up really quick and if it if it's possible to put it up on the main website i think that would garner a lot of attention too and i think we have it already like at least the, the graphic material we have it provided from gitcoin so we either you know use it as is or we modify it a bit and we can put it up and just connect it to a link so this is actually a decent transition because one of the topics in the Discord was um, providing feedback on the right sidebar. I think I think it'd be super reasonable for us to put something about the Gitcoin grant into uh, the right sidebar. I'm not sure, Kobe, how long would that take if we like had some copy and like an icon? Oh, it'll be very quick. <laughs> so you're talking about the new informational section at the top right? Yes, very quick. Um, um, let me share my screen. Or I guess I have to sign into a new account to get it. Hold on. Yeah, did people see today uh, on researchhub.com on the top right, there's like an information uh, box that you can X out of. Um, so what we could do is basically like 
uh, throw a like link to the Gitcoin grant in there with like a short description about it. Um, do you think that would suffice, Jeff, for like a banner? It's kind of like a little, you know, more subtle, but I, I think it could do the trick. Yeah, I think that that'd be wonderful. Um, and if uh, I don't know if just for a limited time, maybe we can have that as the first one in the kind of cycle of the three would be great just so it's at the forefront and then and then we can get rid of it at the end of the Gitcoin grant and then research up can be the front and center one. Yeah, sure. We can do that. Yeah, Kobe, I'll draft some copy right after this and send to you. Patrick, let me know if you need any of the marketing. They have graphics for Gitcoin. So let me know if you need any of that, okay? Yeah, I think we just need like one small icon, kind of like we have the like research hub and research coin icons right now. So maybe that's just like the Gitcoin logo or something. Okay. Okay. Got it. I'll shoot you a message. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I guess uh, any other uh, last thoughts on marketing for the Gitcoin grant? Um, yeah, with that being said, so I can't see it on my researchhub.com because I already X'd out uh, earlier today, but does anybody still have the like uh, information bar at the top of their like, right hand uh, on the uh, home screen? I do have it. Oh, okay, once you close it. Okay, okay. And I, I didn't close it. So. You, you haven't closed it yet? Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. Ricardo, do you mind sharing screen just so we can take a look and share some feedback? Okay, give me a second. So this is a once a day thing, like once it's closed, it's closed for the day. So I think the way it works is uh, once it's closed, it's closed until we add new content. So like, okay. you, yeah, like I won't see what is research up or what is research coin anymore, but um, once the Gitcoin one is pushed, that will be there and then I'll have to X out again. Well, oh, sorry, I did close it, my bad. Okay. I did close it previously. <laughs> close mine almost immediately too. <laughs> Does anybody else uh, have mine should be up? Hold on, and then I can just switch to my computer. Let me check. Yeah, all right. Let me uh let me just log into this on my computer. It'll take one second and I can share my screen. Cool. Thank you, Lynn. Um, I know I almost compulsively X out of things like that as soon as I see the, the X. Yeah, sorry. Do you guys still see the, the bar, the sliding bar? Do you have it also? Do you have it as well? the sliding bar on the the open bounties and on the actually on all of the yeah in, in all the sidebar i have like sl sliding bars as you could slide into the page but like there's no sliding i can go ahead and post that in the bugs that's probably a bug i'm guessing yeah, I, I posted already, but I don't know. Maybe it's because I, I saw in, in Jeff post that it was not there, but maybe uh, Jeff was from mobile. So that's a desktop related kind of thing. Oh, no, that's my. Okay, yeah, it's there. Yeah, it's there. So this is it. Yeah, so this is the new uh, like informational section that we have um, where we've got some like, uh, you know, just random details about how to like use Research Hub, how to join the community. And then we also have a couple of open bounties on the right sidebar. And then we have from Research Hub, which is essentially like a featured content section. So we'd put like product updates and like if we did like a, a SciCon type, you know, announcement post, we'd put that here. Um, any thoughts on this right sidebar? Do you all like, like the design? Do you like having open bounties and from Research Hub? Any other potential like headings that you'd like to see here? So just for context, one thing that we've thought about is like peer reviewed papers. So like if it's been peer reviewed, then it would be eligible to show up in the sidebar just to get a little bit more exposure. Yeah, I like the sidebar and I think bounties appearing first makes sense followed by the from research hub. Okay, right, cool. I really like the bar in general. I think yeah, it's me too. And there's, there's potential to use the other side of the screen as well. Like I like the leaderboard, but maybe the trending hubs is you know, something that is not as appealing. So there could be some more space to put, for example, the peer review ones that you just yeah. mentioned. Do you think it could be possible to like zoom in and zoom out at least the middle or like any of the sidebars that that will help a lot? Mm -hmm. So you mean like you want to be able to X out the sidebars if you don't want them there? Yeah. 
that's an interesting suggestion. I would definitely bring that up. I, I like that because like for me, I never really bothered to look at the trending users or trending hubs. So it would be kind of cool to like be able to get rid of those and just keep, you know, this and this if that was my preference. I, I actually think that's a cool idea. I like it too. Um, I know that our left side bar, we're about to change it and have it be like the navigation uh, for the website in general. Oh, so, cool. Yeah, I still think we're going to have like three columns here in addition to the left side bar. So totally agree where that can be pretty busy and like would be very useful to be able to X out stuff. Overall, the main dashboard's looking better and better as time goes on. Nice. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we shipped this like front page and my hubs um, thing last week. And then we'll also have like a live feed uh, here too, like within the next week or so. Cool. What, one little like text stuff on the research hub in the top right corner. Um, I think it's, uh, it says research hub, but it's separated it's like two words. Uh, I think it's during the, for the research coin. So just kind of combining the research hub to be one word. Um, oh, yeah. Great call. Yeah, where, is he, yeah. where is he looking at? Top right or is it top left on my end? Like the info box that says research coin. Yeah, um, like it's the first word of line three. Um, line three. You see how yours says community right now, when? No, I'm total. Oh, yes, I do. Yeah, I think like flipping back to, yeah, here we go. Yes. Yeah. There's a, yep, good call, Jack. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah, uh, nice. And then the other thing is like, and I don't know, this is not really a big deal, but like uh, the text box actually changes in size depending on how much text is in there. So if you keep your mouse- Oh yeah, yes, you're right. It, That's it, shifts, ugly. it shifts it down, just like something small, but yeah. Yeah, it might as well just take up the whole space, right? I guess, since you have it and like not make it go down or something. Yeah, that's weird. I don't yep. know. Yep, that's a great suggestion. Really, really good eyes there for sure. Yeah, okay. definitely. I didn't notice that. Anything else? We could have hyperlinks on the... What are these bars? Just in case, it, whoops. Like, why does it have these, like, scroll bars here? Is that... Yeah, like that's the one we were mentioning before. Yeah, the oh, scroll okay. bars. Okay. I think it should it should be a bug. Okay. Yeah, I misheard that then. Yeah, cool. So I was saying maybe having an hyperlink on Research Coin, you know, redirecting to the either the, the new blog post could be nice. or But in general, like, just to expand, if someone wants to learn more, it's a quick hyperlink. Makes sense. Uh, Nathan? Nathan, you there? Can you hear us? <laughs> Sorry, Ricardo. I think I missed your last comment. Where, where do you want to see the hyperlink? Right here, I think. Sorry, talk to me. Yeah, you, you mentioned a hyperlink in the last comment. Sorry, I was. Oh taking... yeah, uh, either either uh, not in the title, maybe either uh, first mentioning the text, or even the. F it's also mentioning the first one, the first card that you see. So maybe since this is the first one, yeah. So maybe even in in this case here, or in both, you know. And where where would you like this to link to? Uh. Ideally, to our Notion page where we explain Research Coin, or to the the blog post that just was posted about RSC. So we have a choice there. Okay, cool. I posted mm -hmm. one in the chat. It's got like kind of a lot of the basics of the Research Coin stuff that I think you posted, Pat, a while ago. Yeah, we can definitely add some kind of like informational link here. Even maybe to like the Ether scan for the token might not be the worst idea but yeah that's not a bad idea i know that the contract address is also here in the the notion page you guys made so either one i think is can take someone to the right place okay cool uh joanna do you think that trending hubs can be replaced with newest papers or like replaced with something else because a lot of space that does not many. Yeah, I think we're going to tweak this left sidebar here uh, within the next couple of weeks, like moving the navigation from the top bar to the left. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll probably do something with this leaderboard and the trending hubs. 
Yeah, I agree. I think trending hubs doesn't provide a ton of value for sure. Yeah, especially if you're, you know, it's not really going to likely draw anybody, I don't think. Yeah, I, I, I do think the leaderboard is kind of dope. I've talked to a few people who like messaged me and were like, like my friend Krishna, he's like super gassed up that he's like on the top of the leaderboard. So. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, so I, I think there's a place for the leader or the trend leaderboard trending. Most interesting papers. I actually want to read. I just saw. I want to read this one next. <laughs> this one looks good. Oh yeah, he's uh just a, a hardcore academic. Is he's an astrophysicist <laughs> pretty much mostly, and he does like neuroscience, computational things too. Does that nice? Yeah, super cool. Okay, great. Yeah, this is this is awesome feedback. Thanks so much. I think like a lot of this stuff we can uh, fix pretty quickly. Um, yeah, and so the next thing that I want to talk about, unless anybody has any other ideas for the right sidebar, uh, we had a board meeting last Friday uh, talking about like our next major feature. And so we've decided to spend the next three months uh, continuing to flesh out bounties. And so what I wanted to do is kind of similar to the process that we ran uh, three months ago when deciding to work on bounties initially. Um, I wanted to do the exact same thing, just talking about new use cases for bounties. So I'll share my screen here really quickly. Um, anybody who wants to contribute to this, the link is in the community call notes, but I'll also share here as well in the chat, just in case. Um, and so the idea here is, uh, we just want to list out all of the potential bounty use cases so that way we can talk about them over the course of the week and eventually uh, vote on our favorites and then present it uh, to our team this Friday and potentially start building uh, next week or the week after. So just a couple of ones that I threw in here uh, to start off the conversation, we could have like dedicated peer review bounties. So maybe there's a button on a Research Hub paper page when it's a preprint that says, I want this paper peer reviewed. And then that button takes you to a similar like uh, pop up as the bounties button where you can add like a research coin bounty to have the paper peer reviewed. There's a couple of different things we could do to have like a dedicated peer review section. Like maybe um, once the bounty gets high enough, uh, we ping an editor to help find like an appropriate uh, person to peer review it. And then the editor gets like a cut of the bounty or something like that. Um, another idea could be replication bounties. So this one I think is like very exciting, but could be pretty complicated. Um, there's a really cool website called replicationmarkets.com. And essentially it's just like prediction markets for if papers will uh, replicate. And so we could essentially like try and encourage like gambling on if papers will replicate. And once it gets to like a certain, like, uh, I guess, number of people who are participating in this replication market, we could uh, siphon off some research coin for someone else to come in and actually do the replication. Um, this would be very complicated to get right, but I think could be very cool if we were able to get it right. Um, meta studies here, this is Brian's use case from a couple weeks ago, where essentially he wants to be able to uh, create a bounty for someone to share a narrative review about a specific topic. So he asked a question that was essentially, um, do artificial sweeteners, like, are they healthy? Um, and so there would basically be like a, a bounty for someone to come in and share like a robust uh, review of our artis artificial sweeteners healthy for you. Um, and then the last one here is basically trying to help with like private collaboration. So this is similar to Coab Tree, which is kind of like an upwork for scientific research. Um, the idea here is if you had like a, a science related task that you needed completed, you could list it and then we would help people basically apply and put you in contact and have them like uh, work together in a private setting. So this would be similar to Jeff's idea of like connecting biostatisticians to clinical researchers in order to help them publish more papers. Um, yeah, so these are just like a couple ideas to get started. Does anybody else have any other like top level cool ideas for like potential bounty features we could build? Not sure about the bounties, but like this could verge a lot with um, the journal club discussion because maybe we can do peer review, um, an audio peer review or a video peer review because I mean, we can discuss the paper together. 
Yeah, so one thing we had talked about uh, previously that this kind of reminds me of is like, just a little bit of context. Um, I think preprints.org, their business model is you can pay $300 and have someone create like a uh, visual abstract for your paper. Mm -hmm. And so maybe we could do something like, uh, hey, um, here's a bounty if someone creates a like TikTok video summary of this paper, or here's a bounty for a, you know, a visual abstract, or here's a bounty for like a video like Cole makes about this paper. Um, so just like, you know, other types of content around a paper, you know, maybe that's like an audio peer review um, could be pretty cool. I think another thing that uh, someone here has, I maybe Lynn mentioned it once before, uh, but just to reiterate it uh, was like a uh, ability to recruit for like um, uh, clinical trials or something like that. Or if you're doing like kind of a kind of cognitive science or, or a psychology study and you need people to fill out surveys or something like that, you're really yeah, good. Absolutely. There's so many experiments, especially for like attention and memory that can be done simply by like sending a link, like a hyperlink um and then like surveys and like i feel like we have a really big community and that we could use it to tap into that and that people would use it because there are always people looking for like more reliable subjects even than like mturk yeah totally we we've actually had like um kind of biotechy startups approach us uh like wanting to use research hub as a place to recruit study participants um mostly like patient communities but that could be pretty cool. And I think uh, I, I think it, it would resonate a lot with some of the like different projects in Web3 trying to connect like actual patients with the people uh, doing the research on their diseases. And if we want to do replications through Research Hub, like that could be literally a way to do it. Like if, you know, if you program using like Psychopy, you can run a, uh, an experiment through Pavlovia and like we could literally just like link it through, you know, Research Hub to run our own replications, you know what I mean? You know, that's way down the line, but that's also what we could use our own like in-house subject pool for is like our own replications. Yeah, I mean, that's a super cool idea. Like if we could like create bounties, you know, somehow prioritize what, studies need to be replicated and then do the replication through Research Hub, that's like pretty killer. Yeah, I definitely don't think that's out of the realm of possibility. I was even thinking, Lynn, for like, if we wanted to do a replication feature to get started, I, I remember you mentioning that like, we could do it for like, you know, 500 to 1000 bucks uh, with certain psychology studies. And I think that would be like, more than enough to get us some publicity and have more people coming in. So if we go in this direction, um, we'd definitely love to work with you on that. Yeah, I mean, $10 an hour is even better than what like most MTurk studies pay. And so like if we offered even something like a generous rate for like $10 for an hour or $12 for an hour, you know, that's only a few hundred bucks to get a decent, you know, subject uh, sample size. So yeah, we could definitely talk about that. Um, no problem. Cool. I guess any other ideas when it comes to like potential features that we could build uh, to just add more bounty use cases to Research Hub? Is my what mic the, working now? Oh, sorry, yeah. go ahead, Nathan. <laughs> sorry, I was just testing my mic, but um, it was just related to what Lynn was saying, which is, um, I, I don't know exactly how it works in the US, but in the UK, there's a massive drive to include patient and public involvement in every grant proposal. So at the start of a study, whether it be a clinical trial or even basic science research, you need to have shown in your grant application that you've made an effort to engage all stakeholders, including patients, including, you know, clinicians, etc. And actually, in addition to recruiting trial participants and study participants themselves, they could also actually as a smaller barrier, uh, sorry, a smaller hurdle actually be included as part of the patient and public involvement stage. So would this be like a, like a bounty for grant feedback um, from like specific audiences? Exactly. I mean, it, it doesn't even need to be grant feedback. This, this is the thing, patient and public involvement is so broad <laughs> that actually all you need to do is evidence that you've had discussions with stakeholders about what their priorities are in your research area and then have made an effort to include that in the study design of your proposal. Yeah, 
I mean, that would be really cool. I think connecting patients to researchers is like a, a very compelling use case for Research Hub. Is anybody else with a top level idea here? Our, our plan just in general is to chat about all of these as a team on Wednesday. And then it would be awesome to do like another call with anybody who wanted to participate either Thursday or Friday, or even like Wednesday afternoon just to, to go through all of the use cases and vote on what's everybody's favorite. Are you considering the clerical cases, like the one with OSF for people to check for registrations and open data? Totally, yeah, that's another really good one. Well, you're just typing that one. I just wanted to put out the crazy one that I know other people have, have brought up in the past and has been brought up in other forums, which is this idea of a stock market for research ideas. Uh, you know, being able to create long, short positions on certain research hypotheses, etc. Again, probably not a two month, three month idea, but still, I just thought it'd be, you know, fun to put it down again. Yeah, I mean, I think that's like, um, I think there's something within leveraging betting for good, which could be really, really, really cool. Um, even, I, I just love the idea of like, will this replicate? Yes or no? Do you want to put money on it? Like that could be pretty awesome. Like just to understand like which papers, you know, do most people think will not replicate? It, it, just the curation there would be interesting. And I think would would draw attention. Yeah, I mean, a, an interesting use case, for instance, we were discussing this previously was the Alzheimer's beta amyloid hypothesis. And this idea that actually there was a group, core group of researchers who believed from the beginning that actually the, the basic science data around it was weak. Mm -hmm. And that actually millions, you know, hundreds of millions to billions of dollars was wasted in phase two trials on uh, targeting this this hypothesis and actually it would be interesting it would be fun if from the beginning research hub had a sort of voting area where it said actually we are very short on this idea and that short position got stronger and stronger as negative data came out yeah it is pretty cool i guess uh nathan do you have another product that's kind of similar to this that could be adapted like i know like predict it is a famous prediction market. Um, yeah, just curious, like what we could look at to help, uh, you know, percolate the ideas here. Yeah, um, I know that Molecule are thinking about funding some interesting ideas in the NFT, IP NFT space around this. Um, I don't have a concrete example to mine, but I can certainly, with some research, look into that for you. Yeah, um, if, you have any, if you have any examples, I think it would just be helpful to like wrap our heads around like what it could actually look like. Yeah, I mean, maybe uh, uh, so not not exactly a stock market idea here, but I don't know if you've got an equivalent of Betfair. But here in at least in the UK, we've got Betfair, which is a peer to peer odds betting market that's cool. on you know, everything from politics to, you know, who's going to walk down the street first, you know, after this football game or whatever. And so because it's so wide ranging, actually, it could be a useful ideas marketplace for thinking about how it could apply to research. Yeah, totally. I'll check it out. It's a great idea. Tell me more. I have the crypto version of Betfair. <laughs> like I, I, I know this project's called BetSwap and it's basically Betfair just for crypto. So it could be way easier to kind of like ready something to like something similar so i'm in their discord since like some months so i could you know take a look around and maybe share what i find did i write that down right bet swap ricardo yeah, let, me, let me give you a second okay cool yeah those ones are probably a little bit more difficult even because they have to use oracles and stuff i don't think we're going to even need any oracles for anything like this the one thing that i worried about is like um you know it's like people can almost hedge their bet <laughs> by like you know shorting something but then um you know or like and then and then maybe even just trying to create an irreproducible like study just to say hey i shorted this i'm gonna now pop it's like putting out negative news that shorters do on like tesla um 
So I guess there's like just something to be aware of if we do go through with that. The, there's a, it's, I mean, it's a great point, Jeff. Like the game theory here, you know, we're like guaranteed to get it wrong the first time. <laughs> and so, yeah, figuring it out would, I think, be like a long term goal. Um, there's a famous Scott Alexander essay uh, for Star Slate Codex where he talks about like idealist science or something like that. And it's basically like a prediction market for hypotheses. Um, so I will grab that blog and share it in Discord for anyone who wants to check out. But yeah, I think. I think the idea is like super compelling and if we could execute on it would be yeah just just betting on stuff is so low barrier you know and i think it you could get like the average person you know everybody has opinions on science and stuff like if you could get the average person to like put their money where their mouth is i think it'd be pretty cool yeah one thing i'd add is if the argument is that um the market could become inefficient based on short data i mean the current market is very very inefficient totally. because the, the the idea the barrier to entry for even making a view available is based on a small committee of editors of certain journals that may themselves have an agenda anyway um so i don't think you can get any more inefficient than the current system Yeah, these are great ideas. Uh, anybody have another one? Uh, something maybe related to curation of like citations for a citation manager, if we want to implement something like that, like having like a crowdsourced citation manager where we input some information or correct uh, in like incorrect information. Oh, so you're saying like uh, a bounty for accurate metadata kind of? Yeah, exactly. I actually kind of like that because um, even like really good uh, indexing services like Open Alex, they're only like 80% accurate. So there are a lot of papers where you just need like a random person to go in and take the time to write down all the authors' names, you know, which is a pain in the butt. But I think like in a global marketplace, you could find people who would be like happy to do that for the right compensation. Um, and then like, that's a service that you could then like plug back into these APIs so that way they have more accurate metadata. So that, that could be like a pretty cool, like good karma thing to do for the community as a whole. I think Cole has his hand up. Yeah, I just have a question about the betting system. What would the time frame be? Because you can do puts and shorts for like a week. How, so just as a logistic question, like what would the time frame be for data shorts or puts? I think it would have to be something, I mean, I, I, I have not thought about this nearly enough, but um, like predict it the way it works is like likelihood, the likelihood of the event happening goes from like less than 1% to 99 plus percent. So, I think you can short that where like if the price goes down like a given amount, um, it makes money. I, I, I think we'd have to like, like getting into shorting and stuff like that would probably be like V2, V3, and we'd have to think about it a ton. Okay, maybe something uh, could be, I think it's that fair. Uh, like you can get in and out of a match before it's actually finished. Right. So let's say, you know, your team is like up one zero that, and you have, you know, your team winning, you know, you're, you, you can cash out and get something, you know, out of, you know, the goal that they already made and, you know, cash out before the, the others uh, made it equal or even, you know, uh, uh, reverse the result. There's, there's definitely a way to do it. We'd have to like, think it through pretty completely. Yeah, any other uh, ideas here? Just a little comment. I think um, VitaDAO is going down like a peer review route. So I think what they're going to do is uh, have people be able to pay some money and then people from VitaDAO can like peer review someone's preprint before they submit it into uh, like a bigger article. So a bigger a publication. So. I think the peer review actually is probably the thing that would have the most product market fit, in my opinion, of all of these things. 
it, it, it is actually like an issue that I think it would help solve. Um, and I think they were aiming for something like 300 bucks um, to do that. And so I think if we just undercut that, but then we have this, you know, big community of people that can, we could pick from to like do the peer review. Um, I think we'd, we'd be pretty successful here. Yeah, I think it's a, a pretty good idea. And I know like a lot of journals um, are searching for peer reviewers. So it's possible that we'd be able to have journals like help match researchers funds or something like that. Um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of stuff we could do here. And then I even think we could like potentially like focus on a different industry than do to Dow, just to not necessarily like duplicate efforts. Um, and then just see like, like who's got the better UI UX and have each other learn from like each other's success potentially. Cool. Um, yeah. So like if any other ideas pop up, you know, like feel free to share them. Uh, this link is also within the discord for today's community call. So feel free to jump in, add pros, cons, notes, um, whatever you'd like. We'll end up chatting about this like within our own team on Wednesday, and then we'd love to do another call with anyone who can join here, uh, either Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, just to get like a good ranking of what we think is the most interesting when it comes to continuing to flesh out uh, like the bounties on Research Hub. Do you guys know the you know natures behind the paper? I just learned it about it in the weekend during the weekend and it's it's pretty cool i think it's a version that kind of like combines all of what we said you can kind of like you know follow a person like the content comment on it share it and it's basically like a commentary of a paper like everything that went behind like creating that article so if you could, if we could get the the author of a paper basically sharing something similar i think it would be pretty cool like sharing the process <laughs> that led to that paper. So all the hypotheses that were tested, those that went right, those that went wrong, and how the paper came to, to life. This is amazing. I've never heard of this before. We are trying a similar idea for the journal club to reach out for the author. But that's to... pretty dope. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah, this is so cool. Nathan wants to, to start um, this uh, task. He already reached out to some authors that uh, did the sugar bounty that contributed to the... Yeah, and like you, you had maybe like a 10 minute, 15 minute podcast or even like an AMA in this yeah. and becomes yeah. even better for someone that doesn't want to write, uh, that doesn't want to read like two pages. You can content. join the journal club if you want. We are trying to snapshot something yeah, 100%. Yeah, I love that format, though, that they've used. Um, yeah, that, that, there's a lot of inspiration there that we can take. Yeah, I never, and I never, you know, heard about it. I guess they're not great at marketing because it looks, it looks awesome. <laughs> it looks like it's been around for a while, too, just clicking through it. There's some uh, posts from 2021 in the Journal Club. I mean, it does raise this maybe wider question about when a paper takes off in traditional publications. Is it due to the headline result and lay people reading that result? And is it actually a niche audience that cares about what's gone into the paper and, and the process behind it? You know, that that is something that I do think about. Is, is it just, you know, the other 10 people in the world looking at microbiology in, you know, in, the, in that topic that, that's actually going to read this? Yeah, and I also think like the thing that's really compelling from this idea in general is is more of like a podcast where you can get to know the person behind it. And like there's a little bit of personality injected into the story of how the paper came together. Um, sometimes I feel like just text, it's it's a little dry, you know, and like if you're a researcher trying to improve your career, in my opinion, it's more valuable to hear from the person themselves. But yeah, I think you're right, Nathan. And like, there's only so many people who are going to be like super duper interested in this type of blog. Forget about Have anyone been following the D side podcast from Molecule? Uh, and, you know, what are people's thoughts? I listened to the uh, biology episode, and that guy's incredible. So I thought 
that episode was pretty good, but I haven't heard any other ones. I don't know, Jeff, if you've heard more. I thought they only came out with just that one. So uh, it was very well produced and everything, but uh, yeah, that was the only one I heard. Yeah, I think they've done three three episodes or something like that so far. Um, but Balaji's was by far the most high profile. There are like a, a couple of science podcasts that are pretty good. Like Everything Hurts. Um, there are like uh, three or four of them that I think are pretty quality. We, we could like put together a podcast as a community. They're, they're pretty hard to do though. Uh, Anton, Olga and I like did one very casually, maybe like a year ago. Um, and it was like kind of fun, but like the, you need to like prep a lot in order to have like a, um, you know, hour long conversation about a paper. Like it probably takes like eight hours beforehand like to really dig into the paper, think of interesting content or concepts, like look up background, make sure that you're like not spewing nonsense. Um, yeah, it's a lot of work. So we could do something like that, but it would be like kind of a part-time job for a couple of people. Uh, Joanna? Yeah, we were thinking to schedule bi-weekly the papers and the speakers. In, and I think Nathan and Sadvik and maybe myself or other persons, Tyler, or other persons who want to help, we can schedule something like questions or yeah, peer review, pre peer review. Yeah, I, I love this idea because you bring the expert on and they don't have to prepare to talk about their own research. And I always think the best podcasts are when like the hosts are like, we're kind of dumb. We don't know what we're talking about. We're just here to have fun. And then they bring on the expert to be like the authority on whatever the subject matter is. And the hosts are more like, injecting personality to make it fun to listen to. Yes. What does it say, Jeff? We're lucky to get community generated. Um, yeah, just like uh, people will ask questions anyway on their like on Research Hub on the post. So it's just like you don't even have to like ask people, hey, can you guys make community generated questions? Like naturally they come up through the website. And so we have like a reservoir of questions we can pull from on top of like deep diving you know it's a community crowdsourced deep diving of the paper as opposed to one person having to do it by themselves yeah totally and joanna and nathan whenever you guys like have your first ama scheduled uh let us know and we'll just spam it everywhere so that we can get as many comments as possible on the paper beforehand we are trying to do this i mean we we try make a snap a formal snapshot to propose to you and the board but i think this could be a, a very feasible yeah it's a it's a super nice personal touch i love the idea yeah we love it too cool um so i guess that covers most of the topics i guess uh, another thing that you want to share in the uh the discord is talking about uh, micro credentials um, based on like current uh, metrics for scientific research. And so this is another thing we're probably going to build this quarter um, just because like uh, like in Tyler's survey, you know, one of the like most common pieces of feedback was the hub structure is not great. And so like taking into account like a better way to do the hub structure and then having like hub specific reputation, um, I think it would be really cool. And we've definitely had it in the back of our minds, like trying to tie this to H index or something, you know, like an objective metric of a scientist's like publishing record so far. Um, and I do think that'd be very valuable just to like make sure that people who are high status in like the current academic hierarchy kind of retain that status on Research Hub. Um, and then I think it's super helpful for things like bounties um, and even like potential replication studies, like to be able to ping experts in specific fields with certain opportunities. Awesome. Yeah, it's a great idea. Um, yeah, so I guess in the last like five to 10 minutes here, um, does anybody else have anything they want to bring up? Crazy idea for the bounties. Is there a possibility for uh, anything related to like uh, anything that you know went wrong in an experiment? Like I tested this, this hypothesis, and you know 
it didn't it didn't didn't go as expected and these were my results because he, he never published them but there's a lot of you know um a lot of insights that could go into you know wrong results or things that didn't work but i don't know it, it could be you know difficult to get it right but there could be something there so no, like, it's a great idea just to add something yeah that's sometimes referred to as a death drawer problem right where uninteresting results or insufficient results are not published and people keep replicating or reproducing the same stuff without knowing that it has been done and it failed so i don't know if it should be done via bounties or just by it, it, empowering the community to share these bits that do not constitute an entire article but are good enough as a you know poster presentation or something but it could it could be interesting if it's a bounty for sure yeah, in your mind what would that look like ricardo because i do think like uh negative results are a very um interesting idea to be able to encourage people to share them yeah i don't know it should you know should be something like we like reward you for sharing some of your notes because you know most of the time it's your notes that have all of those results that you you just did not put into the paper so we're basically rewarding you with a bounty if you can share that and make make, make oh, may also make sense of the notes for us so the so that they're kind of like readable for for a person and explain us you know why you think you know that that thing that you tested didn't go as planned and what are your conclusions out of that so you're kind of like um giving a value to just something that would not have value otherwise because would uh, would end up staying in your notebook forever totally so so like we've talked a little bit before about doing something where like if a paper is shared to research hub and it's open access it gets like two x rewards or something like that so so maybe we could do like a template in the notebook for like here's how you publish a negative result just to make it easy for people and then um like jeff said have a tag that you'd add and then uh an editor can come and confirm that it's definitely a negative result and maybe that negative result earns 2x research coin you know maybe there's like a 200 you know research coin bounty as soon as the editor approves it and then it earns 2x or something like that yeah and i think it's also like a super cool social campaign if we go through uh, like uh, if we go for that like uh, even for like marketing country research job to share your negative res results it looks like really cool and i think you know could be something that has some power uh you know from a marketing perspective yeah i agree there's um there's like the journal of negative results um and so i haven't followed up on this project but I know there are like a couple people who have had some success with kind of like the marketing of, you know, being good for open science, like helping to share negative results. And I think, yeah, helping people make money is important because right now it actually hurts your career to to share it. So like having some kind of like positive incentive to help balance that out um, is probably pretty important. So yeah, that's it's a great idea. We definitely talk about it more. Uh, Nathan. Yeah, I, I think when it comes to publishing uh, negative results, there needs to be some authentic incentive. And what I mean by that is, uh, for, there's a reason why journals don't publish negative results. I think if you talk to most editors, they would love to do it. It's just not very interesting. And the reason it's not interesting is we all know that most stuff doesn't work. So when something works, that's interesting and that gets citations because that can lead to further research. That's why I think having it linked to something like a negative bounty system where it's like, okay, disprove this hypothesis and there's an incentive because it's going to save us money plowing our investment into a dead field. Or let's create a long short market where you might put on a negative position to make money for yourself, but now a byproduct of that is that it now incentivizes some researchers to publish their negative findings on it. And you, it would be in your interest based on your negative position to, to fund that. Now, now the, the, obviously I, I've seen Jeff, you winced at that. <laughs> and I think the reason is because we don't want researchers incentivized to have findings in one way or the other before they start an experiment. And that's why I think a key part of this would need to be really robust review of the methodology. Uh, 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 ultimately, it shouldn't matter if the design is robust enough, whether researchers want it to go well or not. 
because at the moment every researcher wants their experiment to be positive right I, I, no i don't know a, a single researcher who goes into an experiment wanting it to be negative at the moment so i mean that's just my thoughts on it i i think there's a reason why journals that that focus on negative results don't get much traction and it's just that no one reads it everyone's behind it but no one really wants to know that you did 10 experiments and none of them work because we all assume that most stuff don't work right yeah totally so I, I think you're definitely right where there needs to be like meaning to the negative like the negative result has to impact some kind of previously held belief um and yeah an example is often when you try to like expand upon a previous finding and you find out you can't replicate the base effect and this is a finding that's been like cited a bunch of times and like nobody's gone and like disproved it and now this paper has like 500 citations and you're like am i the first person who's found out this hasn't worked and this is from like an experience that i had and i was not allowed to publish this because of various reasons so that's a really cool idea like if a paper has a lot of citations and you have negative results in the desk drawer that like you know negate the like initial paper have, having some system where like negative results for a paper that has a ton of citations like gets you a lot of money or something um yeah there, there's definitely a very very cool idea here flushing it out getting getting the details right is going to be tough but yeah have it also kind of dips into the realm of like funding research too, which is very cool. So yeah, personally, I'm really excited about some kind of like betting prediction market, you know, on if something will replicate or, or even on if hypotheses are accurate. Um, yeah, I think there's something here. So we're at about um, an hour now. So any, any last thoughts uh, before we head out for the week? Cool. Well, thank you so much for the time and ideas, everybody. Um, we'll chat about this like bounty idea a little bit more, um, and then I'll post something like in the uh, Discord uh, to find like a time for everybody to come talk about it a little bit more. And then you all have the link, so feel free to play around with the spreadsheet if you'd want at any point. Cool. Yeah. Well, thanks. Sounds great. Yep. See you all next week. See you.